Hi guys and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be talking about Bard of Blood which is coming really soon on Netflix. I'm particularly kicked about it because the trailer looks absolutely amazing and I have a few questions I have to ask both Imran as well as Sobita. So let's dive right into this. Hi Imran. Hi. Hi Sobita. Thank you for coming on to my channel. Pleasure. My first question to you I think has to be something that you may have seen coming. You launched the book yes. I think a few years ago. That's right. What were your thoughts about the book? Did you read it? Was it did you expect that you would be doing a web series at some point based on it? No, um, I launched the book with Bilal in Mumbai in 2015 and that was roughly the time when Bilal and uh, me were writing uh, my book Kiss of Life. He had already completed Bar of Blood which was his first book and we launched it and there was a journalist in the audience who had asked a question um, you know if this was adapted into a film because that time Netflix hadn't come to India mm -hmm. and I said of course and I just joked and saying that only if there's a kiss in it I'll do it but uh, <laughs> I think post that in 20 I think it was 18 or 2017 I heard the, the, the uh, there was a launch and uh, Netflix Red Chilies had come on board and I was very happy for Bilal because I'd read the book back then and I was like, God, this is a real page turner. This makes uh, a fantastic film and even better an original series because if you're making it into a film, you have to really compress and truncate a lot of things and, you know, delete characters and, you know, moments from the and nuances from the book. But here we'd actually had to add stuff because there was more stuff than the book. Yeah. Characters were added. Obviously the end is, has been changed. It's okay. very different from the end of the book. The characters of Isha, um, Kabir and Veer have been dramatized. Yeah, the essence of the book and pretty much the plot is the same. But yeah, I was um, pretty happy that um, I was considered and you know, we, we went ahead with the series. That's so nice. So those of you who have read the book by Bilal Siddiqui should probably stay tuned because it is not the same clearly. The ending has been changed. It has been changed, yeah. The thing is with a show, you have to have, it's like a great interval point when you have in a film, you know, the, the lights come on and you, you're you waiting to go back into the cinema hall to know what happens the next yeah. uh, half of the film. Every episode ends on a like a cliffhanger moment or like a hook point which will have you, uh, you know, coming back for more. And that's that's a brilliant thing that the, the writers have done with this. Which one do you prefer though? Do you prefer the ends of the book more or the way the web series is I prefer out? the end of the series because okay. uh, it's a major shocker. You know, I, I remember reading it uh, a, a year back when it was adapted into the screenplay for our series and I called up Bilal, I was like, God, and I was screaming on the phone, man. You guys have like outdone yourselves. What an end for the series. So I, I was I was very, very happy with it. What can you tell us about your character, about Kabir? I mean, it's as the promo uh, states, but without revealing too much, he is at, you know, when you catch him in the show at a point in his life and he just picked, he's picking up the pieces. He's, he's been expelled from his agency five years back. He was a spy. So you catch him at the beginning where you see him, that he's, he's teaching Shakespeare. He's teaching literature in a school in Mumbai. Very unassuming. Uh, a normal guy, you know, uh, middle class, lives in a small middle class home and slowly start revealing things about him that he was an expelled spy and he's a dangerous man, he's a killer and you don't expect that when you see him at the first glance. The Kabir you see in the first episode of this well-adjusted guy who is dealing with these, he's, you know, he's, he's suffering from PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder because that happens to most of the people who go on covert operations and in, in the military when they're hurled out of the battlefield, they still, you know, the past haunts them and the Kabir in the last episode are like two different people. That was a very interesting arc for me to play of playing Kabir out. You know, that was a big sell for me when I heard uh, from the book, uh, when it was in the synopsis, a spy who's also a Shakespeare teacher, that was the biggest sell for me. I wanted to read this book and that's exactly what is kind of really, uh, you know, captivating the audience to know, yeah, this is an interesting uh, character. Tell us about Isha Khanna on Bar of Blood. I play this girl uh, who sees herself as an officer who happens to be a female and uh, she works as an agent for Raw and she fully believes that she has the capacity to do things the way the rest of the boys do on the field in a mission. But she isn't given that chance because she is a female. Or, I mean, it's it's understandable, but it's also unfair. And uh, she really has a lot of people to prove wrong before her, her merits are even assessed fairly. She's on this mission with um, Kabir, played by Imran, Veer, played by Vineet, in Balochistan, Afghan, that whole, all, that whole terrain, to sort of rescue four Indian agents who've been held hostage. There's a certain naivety, a certain newness, because uh, she really tries so hard to belong to that world and she has to prove to these people that she can do it. Because for the longest time, she was not given a chance. The truth is, she's also very scared, but she does not have the space or the freedom to be afraid. So, 
it was it was very nice playing that. Your spy code name is am I if I'm pronouncing it correctly Adonis. 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 What is the story behind that? Because that's a really unusual name. It is an unusual name. I have not asked Bilal why <laughs> that name and why he deserves that name. The reference of Adonis is is, is only in the first few scenes where Isha's character, played by Sobita. speaks about the legend of uh, Adonis in the firm okay. that there was this guy who was uh, the super spy who was really good at his job he was a hostage rescue specialist but then his reputation had been tarnished he had been thrown out he had done something terribly wrong that you discover through the show that's the time when you hear about Adonis and the first time he says uh, my mentor says this is his real name Kabir Anand and he's you know he's kind of living in the shadows right now in Mumbai is in the first episode itself so yeah there's a there's a a bit of that enigma around the character so most of your story is based in and supposed to be around balochistan which yeah. right now in the subcontinent of politics is a little bit you know people can be slightly hesitant to play something in that area at yeah. the moment mm. did you have any hesitation while taking it on especially right now not really because you know our book is um, has been written back in 2014 2013 is when the idea came to bilal and he released it in 2015 so the political sentiment uh, the environment was very different at that point of time it's a work of fiction um yes when you have a film of this uh, original series of this nature and when you pit these two nations yeah. and you get references of rebels in balochistan it definitely emotions do run high mm -hmm. mostly on both sides of india and pakistan but people have to understand like we had like tremendous amount of you know there was you know trolling uh, uh, to a certain extent on the second day but people have to understand there's is nothing close to propaganda here because this film is a, a work of fiction yeah. there are references to yes uh, to spies and how the relations are between these two countries but i mean when people see the show they will realize that uh, yeah it's just purely to entertain the audiences i'm 100% with you on that i hope it gets taken and does yeah. well in the same but but spirit. but here's the thing people really assume things when they see a, yeah. a, a two minute capsule right yeah. people assume that there's something in the show that is going to kind of really you know you know hurt their um, feelings and so that's that's a little tricky but i think you got to wait for the show and people will know that it's just for entertainment there's two things to it i really both things okay one um this book was written much before right. before any um social civil discomfort right. ar arose i'll talk about the other thing actually i think i feel for it more say this is year 1523 hmm. any time in history all art be it literature painting music dance uh with so their own that times version of theater plays they all represented what was happening on the streets at that time right they reflected what was happening in the society paintings you see how a king looked or what their customs were we decode these things through literature so at some level whatever was happening on the streets is what was reflected so as actors um i feel like i want to represent the dilemmas and the conflicts of my time this show is not about that this is my personal take on it right i want to tell stories i'm not burdening myself with the responsibility that I have to hold the flag of society because I'm not a teacher. I'm an actor. I'm telling stories, but stories that that have something to do with reality interest me immensely. But yeah, this this show is is a is a work of fiction, and he wrote it a few years ago when none of this really was in the forefront. And I have no reluctance. If anything, I'm even more curious. And these are matters that you know, like this whole spy Taliban. Oh, grime and all of this is something we see in movies in a very fantastical larger than life way or we see it in in books or news but it's so distant it's still so far we forget that these are still people who get hungry who sweat mm. who pee yeah. who probably haven't showered in a while and are feeling gross about it right uh they are beating hearts on a battlefield and they are scared so to be able to play a character who's going through these situations made me curious was there anything that you really resonated with about the character was there anything you identified with yourself in like in real life as we say i think the fact that you can't really wear your fears on your sleeve because there are 100 people out there already like all non believers that you are a non starter to them so to have to really go through the grind alone in your own head and then to win their trust that whole you know it's like not being given a fair trial in general is something i i understand it must have been hard to also shoot a lot of the sequences from the web series right because it's very different from from what you've played recently from what you've played before 
every character i play so far they're all actually very uh, very different from each other and made in heaven for example is the only part which is um, uh, the, where the characters like well presented well dressed right. or in a, in a world that's a lot more pleasant and pleasing but that's also because such is the context of the story it's not just a dressed up Person, thing for no yeah. reason um prior to that every film or every project i've done or i've been a part of they have all been experimental or niche i really like playing ordinary people in extraordinary circumstances i i i am very interested in the average i am not eager to be a hero so that's very freeing for me and uh, i act because i'm curious about people i want to know why someone does what they do what is their motivation what is their body language and i want to be them even if for a brief amount of time i have to ask you also because there's a lot of uh, action and there's a lot of there's just a, it must be like really heavy duty work to perform the kind of scenes that i'm expecting to see yeah. um was there any kind of training that you went through or any prep that you really like took seriously before getting into shoot uh yeah sure i mean th th there was th the physical aspect which is very important uh, the physical agility uh the, the the kind of action that we have in this is uh it's very real it's rough it's gr gritty uh it's not your typical choreograph hindi film action i am beating up 10 people in one scene which might seem a little outlandish but a wonderful action director one of them ryan who's who has come from uh la he said that i will make this look believable and he has because that scene has been shot in one uh, in one shot okay so that's why you you can see that he can do it they've actually done it with krav maga you can actually take down people with that self defense uh, technique it's not defying the laws of physics yeah <laughs> at the same time uh, yeah there's a sense of realism the different kinds of guns and not your slick state of the art guns because you're going to a war torn region right you have rusty ak47s and what have you so it's just that sense of realism and it's the body language of you know how do you take cover how would you take cover behind a wall these are the little things that were very important to kind of just make the experience more immersive for the audience i've never done action before mm -hmm. and we tend to bracket ourselves like okay maybe ye main nahi kar paungi shayad uh this is like stuff for the boys so there will be like some nominal obligatory action but i actually really enjoyed it because it was new i physically also i discovered that i actually had the capacity for it to pull it through and i really enjoyed it it was a it was a great rush did and you we, train a lot yeah so um playing a raw agent uh, obviously there is a, all agents go through a certain set of training modules so you really have to get your body language right mm -hmm. you're not an amateur or a, or a, for example a taliban character there are people who source guns and who use them the way they see right right but an agent is trained right. and they can't really get the body language wrong there's more finesse yeah and this protocols how you move hmm. if there's two people coming versus three people versus solo versus group versus you're going in a group versus right side versus door left opens so it's different so an understanding only when you know the basics and the rules can you improvise so we had training before we left for shoot and i really enjoyed it and uh, I felt like oh I'm a cool soldier mm -hmm. now. <laughs> On set also we had uh, very good action teams Kecha and uh, Ryan and Ryan, I remember I was super eager to do like as much action as possible and I used to tell Ryan that you know like what like Imran and Vinita are getting even I want to kick even I want to do <laughs> and uh, he said something which really stayed with me he said slow is smooth smooth is fast. Ooh so that really made a lot of sense when you're like when you're smooth with what you do even if you do little it's still much more sharp so i really enjoyed the action part and and also it's action that i'm doing not not an overly stylized action mm -hmm. this is a woman who is new to the field and who's consumed and wanting to prove her metal in a burqa in insane situations or in a baluchi dress with a rusted ak47 running on the field for her life there is a lot of emotional undertones which really give it that gravity so i feel very very delighted and fortunate that i got to play it with so much thrill and you painted quite a picture in my head right now so i feel like sorry it's just no, it's i'm great. very i'm very transported i've just had coffee also so, yeah. <laughs> no i think it's great you've painted a lovely picture in my head and i can't wait to see how it turns out i haven't watched screen. anything so i am very excited <laughs> also 
So I always end my interviews with a fun game. Okay. And I'm going to ask you three questions. Now, I wish we could do something a little more in line with the show, but we can't be killing people here. That's not possible. Oh, that's not possible. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm going to ask you three games, and hopefully you'll kill it with the answers. Yeah. Considering you and Sabita spent a lot of time on set working on this web series, mm -hmm. these three questions are going to be about how well you've been able to spy on her. On her, okay. Kind of trying to be in theme okay. here. Okay. Um, I was always, always looking over her food when she was eating. So, yeah. I don't know if that mm -hmm. kind of... Uh, Spy See, now spy. you've got me that you've said food. Yeah, like now even yeah. I'm going to be <laughs> keeping an eye out for what she eats. So I'm going to ask you three questions. Okay. And you have to try to answer them hopefully correctly. Okay. So first off, Sabita is a trained dancer. Yes. In which forms? She is. Bharatnatyam, I think. And there's one more. I forget the name. It's just Kuchipri. a very comp. Yeah, I can't even pronounce it. That's it. That's <laughs> Bharat the one. Bharat Nathya We'll get yeah. half a point for that. All right, half a point it is. Before Imran started acting, he was an AD for a film. Oh. Which film was it? Oh, is it an Aftab Shabdasani film? No. I know he was an AD for a film. Ah, we spoke I'll about it. I'll tell you. Does it start with, start with A? No. Or V? No. It's Raz. Let me like get you out of your he misery. He's an AD on Raz. Raz. Oh. Yes. <laughs> oh. Which pageant did Sabita represent India in? Yeah, wasn't it the Femina Miss India? No, that was in India. Yeah. What did she represent India in? Oh. Like one step again. Okay, do I get options? Okay. Miss World, Miss Asia Pacific, and Miss Earth. Was it uh, Miss Asia Pacific? Jesus, I'm, I'm very terrible Miss Earth. <laughs> All right. What's Imran's autobiography called? Our uh, Case of Life. Yes. Okay, if this one is like just easy because there's no correct answer to this. If okay. Sabita was actually a spy, how would you catch her? I would actually um, hack into a phone. Because she's not, she wouldn't be a very good spy. She's constantly hooked onto her phone. Mm -hmm. I don't think she can do without her social media accounts. So, you know, if you have to be a spy, you have to be slightly stealth. Mm -hmm. You definitely can't have a social media account. But she's constantly on that. Are you like that also? Would you make no, a good spy? No, I'm not. I would gladly delete my accounts. <laughs> but I, I don't have the discipline. Like People keep telling me, you know, you should post more, should post more. Yes. But, uh, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's also a millennial thing, I think. Yeah. I think they're more comfortable I can't comfortable relate to anything it. you're saying because I'm hooked to my phone on exactly. social media Exactly. So, I think I've seen the best of both worlds. So, I understand that it can really get in the way of things. But for a lot of people, it's a way of life. If Imran was actually a spy, how would you catch him? I'd show up at the gym. <laughs> You'd show up at the gym? <laughs> yeah, he'd probably be there in a corner. So, he, you kind of got like one right. I don't, I don't think we, he got any right earlier. That's disgusting. Yeah. So, you All win. further interviews with Imran combination cancelled. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sabita, I have to do a fun rapid fire with you. Oh because God. God, it is such a cliche, but I love it. Okay, fine. These are like just personal choices based on your beauty and fashion choices. Okay. Denims or gowns? Denim. Heels or sneakers? Sneakers. Sneakers. Mm. I feel like I know the answer to the next one, but I still have to ask you. Opened out blow dried Bollywood hair or like top buns, top knots? Maybe a top knot. I've seen you in more top knots, I mean, yeah. to be fair. Netflix and chill, literally, or a night of partying? Netflix and chill, of course. But they're both the same thing to me. You Netflix and chill is a party. Then yeah. you're my kind of person. <laughs> yeah. Eyebrows or mascara? Eyebrows as in? Like doing your eyebrows? Oh, I, I don't do my eyebrows, so. What? These are your natural brows? Yeah, sorry. Okay, I'm jealous. I have to like fill my brows like really, really precariously. And okay then. <laughs> Basic style or like super experimental? Experimental. No makeup taste or full on glam? No makeup. Thank you for talking with me. Thank you. And uh, thank you for being on my channel. Thank you. Cheers. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, turn those bell notifications on and keep coming back for more videos. See you in the next one.